welcome back to the Crackheads podcast with me, Shannon. And me, Kegs. Episode what? two. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you're broke by elbow with excitement. <laughs> We're just that buzzing. Um, yeah, episode two. This is so fun. No, I love it. Like, I've been excited all day. Like, we've been flat out today, to be fair, getting stuff done. But I've just been buzzing all day getting the studio. Like, the last, last thing we recorded was the best crack. And after we released our first episode on Sunday. The buzz. We have just been buzzing, haven't we? The buzz. Honestly, the feedback has been more than I ever thought it could be. Like, better than I ever possibly imagined. I am just so buzzing. I am actually buzzing and it's already it feels like we have a really nice little community going. 100% with our like, listeners. I literally am feel so every time I see every, all your posts and your stories and everything I'm like oh my god that's so cute. Like thank you so much for everyone sharing it. your stories that you've been watching it. And even people coming up to us in the streets and all like I listen to your podcast and loved it. I'm like oh my god yes love it. Yeah, even people I know like friends and stuff message me being like oh my goodness listen to your podcast. They do say it's weird cuz they know me personally but then they're like it's actually so good like it's so interesting. And I'm like that's what we want. We want it to be for everyone. Yeah. But everyone it. so yeah, welcome back to episode two. Thank you so much for joining us. So yeah. we'll stuck get stuck in, shall Let's we? So what is the crack this week? So this is going to be what's the crack over the past two weeks because our first episode was recorded two weeks ago. We pre-recorded it quite heavily because we were we were nervous. We weren't going to get everything edited in time, but now we're getting into the swing of it. So we skipped a week, so we'll be up to date. So each week we'll actually be up to date fully on what's actually going on. Mm-hmm. So we've got two weeks to catch up on. What's the crack this week, Shannon? Okay, what's the crack with me um, in my life? So remember the last time I was in, I said I was starting volunteering? Yes. So I've started that. And honestly, it has brought me so much joy. So I'm actually allowed to talk about the company that I'm doing it for. It's an organization. They're called Orchardville. And it's basically an organization that they are for adults with learning disabilities. And they help them get into employment. They teach them life skills. It's unbelievable. So I've done two volunteering groups with them. One today and one last week. And it's just brought me so much joy. I am completely loving life. I love that for you last class. I was watching your story earlier and you dancing with them when you're just oh, our story. I was are, like, yes. They're just the loveliest people. That's been my life. The podcast and my volunteering honestly is the most exciting thing going on in my life at the minute. <laughs> and I love it. I'm here for it. That's what I want. Yeah, you know what sick. I mean? Um, what else was I at in the last two weeks? I started Pilates. Well, I done one class. Does nice. that mean you started? I don't know. Done one class. <laughs> The leg. Pilates <laughs> queen. Pilates queen does one class. <laughs> makes it her whole personality trait. <laughs> Love it. Um, but yeah, started Pilates. I don't know. I think I'm, I'm laying low. Didn't really do much even on Paddy's Day. Yeah. I had one drink at a cider and went home. You, to be fair, you don't Paddy's Day sober. I don't Paddy's Day sober, yeah. Mm. And it was good crack, to be fair. I've actually got a funny story to tell you. I actually haven't told mm. anyone this. Go. It is. One of the most embarrassing things ever, and you're going to die. See, this is great. Me and Kegs have came to this like agreement. We're not telling each other gossip throughout the week anymore. We're saving it for the podcast so we can share it with you guys. So <laughs> take it away. I want to hear this. No, you're going to die. I shat myself. Sorry, Paddy's Day. <laughs> I pooed my pants on Paddy's Day, and I, I was sober. I was about to take a drink, thank you. Because <laughs> that would have been all over the microphone. Sorry, <laughs> elaborate. No, I literally have never shot myself in my life as an adult ever. And I have been in some states partying and drinking and stuff, like literally a mess. And I have never once shot my pants in my life. So tell me why on the one day of the year that I'm freaking sober, I poo my pants. Like what? <laughs> I'm sorry. What a way to open a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so basically I was in whites and we went outside. My friends wanted to buy a vape or something. And we were outside the front and the queues for the toilets and Paddy's Day were just like next level. As in like they were just massive and I really needed to pee. So I ran across the street to the wee alleyway across the street from White's, which is mm-hmm. like on the way to Victoria Square. And obviously that's usually like a busy enough street. Mm-hmm. So I was peeing and because I was sober, I was anxious because I was afraid of something coming. And I was like, usually if you're drunk, you wouldn't care if you're peeing in like an alleyway or something. Oh. But I was like forcing it to come out really, really fast because I was like really needed to get it done. And then I felt something. I was like, oh my God, did I just poo myself? And then I was like, oh my God, no, I definitely did. And I ran to... What did you do? I ran to Victoria Square and thank God it was only a little bit. Like it didn't reach the material of my clothing. So I got myself cleaned up. I went back out. Oh my God. I was like, how have I done that? Like I've never done that in my life. You would probably be safer drinking. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's my advice. Don't say sober kids, you'll poo your pants. Jeez Louise. Okay. Uh, So any other crack I'm afraid to ask (laughs) now? (laughs) So that was Paddy's day and then what did I do? I went to a concert with my sister mm-hmm. and I actually mm. did drink a few drinks then. Um, but yeah, I went to a concert with my sister called a band called Amble. They're an Irish band. 
and they were incredible. They were so I see good. The stories looked very good. They're like kind of like an Irish. What for the sounds Irish? They were kind of like that sort of vibe. Mm-hmm. They were telling us they only met last year. They only quit their jobs in January, and I was like, "This crazy." They're oh, selling wow. out big venues already, and you know when you could see them. They know they're like doing well because the the whole crowd singing back their songs. Yeah, they're yeah, smiling. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, it's so nice to see. So I'll definitely be going back to them. I also seen a guy that I fancied at the concert, right? Okay. And this guy, I followed him ages ago. Didn't follow me back. I was like, right, whatever. I slid into his DMs twice, and I don't even slide into people's DMs often. Like that's not a thing I do. But it's very rare that I see a guy from Ireland that I fancy. Do you know what I mean? Mm, so you have to you have to take the chance. I have to take the chance. Yeah. So anyway, I seen him in the distance and I turned around and he was staring at me because he was looking at me because he obviously knew who I was. Yeah. And he was like staring at me to clock like to try and figure out who I was. And then he yeah. was like, Oh, hey, hey, how are you? And like it was really awkward and turned his back. But I was walking past him, so he was like deliberately ignoring me. And I was like, right, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then the next day I walk into a cafe on my own, literally looking like a scruff mm. and was sitting to do work. Who the frig is in the cafe? Yeah. Only him. But I caught him twice looking at me as in like, I like, would turn around. He was like looking at me, but he would like, deliberately look away. So yeah, I was sitting beside the toilet and this man has to walk past my table to go to the toilet. And he like, you know, when someone's deliberately avoiding you, yeah, he like walk past the toilet and we'd like look the other way and like deliberately forcefully not make eye contact with me. And then the same when he left the building, I was like, why does that man not want to get my attention so bad? Like why yeah. is he ignore me so bad? <laughs> but yeah, whatever is what it is. Oh, he must um, have something something against you. <laughs> I'm like, what, what's what's the problem with me? <laughs> maybe maybe he heard the poo story. <laughs> sorry. Anyways. I'm sorry, still not over. But yeah. That their team move thing, I was gonna talk about that. Oh yeah, so my sister is obsessed with the Shane and T Moo stuff. Yeah. I haven't jumped on it because I don't know. I am suspicious about them kind of things. And she's been fine. She's got her orders, she's got her money and everything. But right, I actually haven't told anyone this. I've, ch- I've changed everything now. So I never done the Shane or Timu thing. I never like took part in it. But I did click my sister's link for her. You know, just to give her money. And it like gave me a voucher or something on my account. So like it, it definitely knew it was me, my account. And I just give her money or whatever. I don't know. And then it must have been... What day was it? Maybe Monday? Two days ago? Yeah. I woke up and my iPhone had given me a notification that my information had been involved in a data breach. Oh, really? And it gave me a list of all the websites I needed to change my passwords for. So I sat and did it all. That's why I can only really say it now because it took me to just get all the passwords changed. So I didn't want to put it out there before I changed it. That's But nice. I was thinking like, what have I used or what have I done? It could be completely random. Yeah. But also... It's kind of sus. Mm, I don't know. I don't want to scare anyone, but no, I, I made did a have TikTok to change about all my passwords. Because... I basically realized a long time ago that there is no such thing as free money. Yeah. So about five years ago, I was living in Ibiza. I was skint. I also had zero common sense. Mm -hmm. And these men were basically going around all the workers and they were saying that they're doing this thing where you get like loads of free money and all you have to do is sign a few forms basically. And they're like, you're not going to get in trouble. Like it's grand, blah, blah, blah. And everyone was doing it. Jumping and everyone just it. jumping on the bad bandwagon. Like if you're skint and I beat yeah, you, all you want to do is have a good time. We're like, yeah, yeah. friggin' let's go. Um, so we all done it. A few years later, every single one of us, which was literally 90% of people that I knew in Ibiza, had done this scam and we yeah. all got letters from the government. We'd done this scam. It was a scam. It was a scam. We're, we're scamming the government, but we were so unaware. The boys tricked us. And we basically got fined. We ended up having to pay like over double the money that we got, which was oh, like quite a bit of money. Oh my God. And yeah, we're all, we all had to pay it back basically. But that's when I realized it was like, I don't frig with like free yeah. money things because there's always a catch. As I said, my sister's all for it. She's done it and she has got money and clothes and stuff. But I'm just like, mm. I don't know. I'm just a bit Did sus. you see the terms and conditions? No. Oh my God, I would get it off for you. But someone sent me the terms and conditions then. If you, whenever I, you click on the thing, it gives you like three seconds to agree to it, which is obviously sus enough. Mm. But when you agree with it, then you're basically giving the company access to like your identity basically for forever. Oh. And they can get access to your voice. They can get access to all your photos. They can be able to use your images. They can use your videos. So like in the future, when AI becomes a thing, they can literally use everything that you own. My boyfriend, Karen's all into that stuff about like a- AI and mm. like the government getting your information all. But I'm like, is the government really interested in we Shana Mitchell from Bally Bing? <laughs> no. Fair. Like, do you know what I mean? What are they going to say? Me doing wee TikToks and get ready with me in my room. Yeah, do fair. you know what I mean? Take the information off my... <laughs> I really Take don't it. have that much excitement to give you. <laughs> yeah, right enough, to be fair. I was thinking the same. I was like, should I just do the team movie thing and get a couple of grand and like freaking take my information? But then I was like, yeah. nah, I'm not doing the free money things anymore. I just don't think the government would... <laughs> really care about my information enough but 
Happy for people that's getting money though. Fair yeah, play to them. 100%. Yeah. Oh my God, no. I was going to tell you the crack with the guy replied to my trolls. It is the funniest comments oh, I've right, ever seen. Oh, right, yeah. Tell me about this. Just some guy has... I get So sometimes on my videos that I would wear makeup and stuff, mm-hmm. it ends up on like the for you pages the of The dodgy like, side. American hillbillies. Oh, like the most yeah. homophobic people ever. And the comments crack me up. Like I don't give a shit about those comments because like, they're funny. Like You're at some, peace with yourself, so... Oh yeah, I don't give a shit. About, like, maybe it would have yeah. affected me a few years ago, but from not doing social long. media, you have to do work on yourself to not care about those sort yeah. of things. And then this guy basically has took upon himself off of like an anonymous account and is replying to every single troll comment. But he's going on their profiles, finding out their parents, finding <gasps> out their girlfriends. And he's com- commenting back and was like, I'm um, tagging the girlfriends. I'm like, hey, girl, sort your man out. He's being homophobic here. No girl shouldn't like homophobic way. men. And then tagging their parents. Be like, hey, your son is too old to be leaving homophobic, nasty comments and random Fair people's Fair play to that guy. I was like, yes, lad, go on ahead. <laughs> we love him. Shout out love to him. him. <laughs> oh my goodness, legend. So fun. I, I want it. someone like that. My, to be fair, my comments aren't too bad. That's yeah. what I was telling you earlier. I keep, there's just like one account. But it's not the one account. It's the same comment on different accounts, but it must be the same person because it's all fake accounts. And they just keep commenting on my videos being like, oh my goodness, no way you went to Australia. You wouldn't know you have mentioned it a thousand times. And that's what I said to you. I just delete you the comment. Australia? I know, you wouldn't know <laughs> it. But I just delete the comment. But I'm like, I was saying to Kegs, like, my social media is called Shannon Mitchell because I am Shannon Mitchell. So therefore, I'm going to speak about what happens in Shannon Mitchell's <laughs> life. And I've just moved home from Australia. So of course, I'm going to talk about that, especially when it's something that people are interested in. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I'm like, you're just so annoying. But it kind of makes me laugh because it takes me two seconds to delete the hate comment or the annoying comment. But it takes them um, at least like a minute to post it. Yeah, so I'm like, you're actually wasting more time than I'm wasting here. Just Block me, unfollow How me. How sad is your life Go that you're away. literally sitting on random people's accounts, <laughs> commenting negative shit? At like, least give me man. like proper hair. Come on, <laughs> give, me <laughs> give your it best. to me. <laughs> That's rubbish. <laughs> I love it. But yeah. So yeah. let's move on to the next section. No, wait till you hear the crack, and it's your turn this week. So I was thinking I'm gonna take this back, maybe till I was like twenty. I should have been twenty-one because it's in America, but it's fine. Um. Yeah, I should have been twenty one because there was alcohol involved. But <laughs> oh my god, yeah. But like, it's eighteen here. Who cares? Exactly. So I was like twenty. Basically, quick backstory for anyone that doesn't know, because a lot of people don't know this, and then they're really, really shocked when I bring it up. I have a little sister called Sophia, and back in like I don't know twenty sixteen when she was like thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, she was like really big on Instagram and YouTube and stuff. And I knew I was so shocked when I found that out <laughs> as well because I remember years ago I was in Victoria Square and Victoria Square was rammed down the center bit where the Christmas tree usually is because Sophia Mitchell was doing a meet and greet and yeah. I was like what the hell is crazy and then I found out she's your sister I'm like what loads of people don't know it but yeah so because of that we traveled a lot because she like modeled and done social media so we'd always be in LA and I'm gonna tell you the story about how I ended up in Soldier Boy's penthouse. <laughs> like <laughs> this is what i always say like i'm quite a boring person but i have lived so many lives like it's crazy like i don't even feel like i'm the same person but anyway so we're in la this is like back when vines like a big thing yeah so do you remember like cameron dallas yeah nash gray or taylor kniff we were going to like parties with them <laughs> oh my god nice they're all very extractive men <laughs> yeah also <laughs> crazy people though like that's a story for another day right, anyway yeah. And they're probably all changed now and they're probably all lovely. But back then, they were pretty messed up. A mm. lot of people in LA were. But anyway, we were at this party this one night. It was just me, my friend Louise, and our friends, Kate and... I can't remember the other girl's name. But anyway, we were leaving this party and we were phoning an Uber. And I was like, yeah, waiting on the Uber. And this guy comes out of the garage of the par- the house that the party was in. It was like a massive house in like Beverly Hills. And he comes out and... A Rolls Royce. And he was like, like a really nice Rolls Royce too. I don't know my cars, but like it was a nice looking car. Okay, yeah. And he was like, what are you waiting on girls? And we were like, oh, an Uber. And he was like, no, like I'll give you, I'll give you a lift. And we were like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's jump in the okay, stranger's Rolls car. Rolls Royce. Do you know what I mean? But he was at the same party we were All at, right, but we okay, just yeah. didn't really know him. And don't do that, by the way. This was, <laughs> this was many, many years ago. Um, I probably would have done the same to be yeah, fair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't I probably still do it again. But anyway, <laughs> so we get in this car and it turns out he lives like right beside the apartment that we were staying in. So he was like, do you want to just like come up to mine for a while? We'll have a few drinks, whatever. We're like, yeah, it's still pretty early. Let's go in. So we get into the lift and he pushes like PH on the button. 
penthouse oh, on the nice. left. And when you go up the lift, like the whole top floor was just his apartment. I have never seen anything like it. Like it was, you literally, the lift opened. You could only get onto his floor if you had like the key for his floor. Right. And you came out the lift and that was just his whole apartment. It was huge. And I'm like, who is this guy? Who are you? Like, who is this guy? Like what? what's going on? And me and my friends are looking at each other. And I will say one thing. This is what like threw me off that I was like, this is a bit weird so i was sitting at this table and there was just like these massive big like gold chains with like diamonds on them you know like the rappers wear right just yeah. like sitting all over the table there was like weed sitting everywhere obviously that's like legal in america or whatever but still i was a bit like where the hell am i <laughs> <laughs> Whose house is this? yeah so i was like the guy was like do you live here alone or what's the crack what's what's going on and he was like oh no like my buddy i was like who's your buddy He's like, soldier boy. <laughs> <laughs> soldier boy up in the club. I was like, piss off. <laughs> Your mate is not soldier boy. You don't live here with soldier boy. He was like, nah, like I do, I do. He was like, lift that chain up. Right enough, I lifted the chain up on the other side. Soldier soldier boy. I was like, oh. On, on the chain? Yeah, so the front of it said like something records and it was all diamonds. And then the back set was like engraved soldier boy. Nice. I was like, oh shit. Soldier boy does live here. So... Anyway, we ended up all going home that night. And like, I still was like, I don't know if Soldier Boy lives there. Do you know what I mean? Right. But like, yeah. it's believable because it's class. So we go and home. It is LA. You could literally end up with anyone. Mm. We go home and the next day we go on social media. And I go on to, at the time, this is how long ago this is. Do you remember Soldier Boy and Chris Brown were like shouting each other out for like the box? Oh, really? Do you never remember this? I can't remember. This was like, this is how long ago it was. It was like whenever people were being like, I'm going to box you. And, celebrities the way that like influencers are doing yeah yeah, okay, yeah yeah so soldier boy and chris brown were doing it so soldier boy posted this video and it was the apartment we were in the night before with the chain on that i actually have a photo i'll see if i can find it but i have a photo of me with the chain on and i was like oh my goodness like that was that was, <laughs> that was soldier boy's house so then the guy who lived with him, he, he we ended up being good friends with him. So weird. Like he was friends with like Kylie Jenner and all, but then friends with us. Bizarre. <laughs> but um, he was really nice. And he, it was his birthday. He invited us around for his birthday. And that's like all the mag con vine guys were there. And what is that? Like Jake Paul and all? Jake Paul. It was like the, it was like the um, Nash Greer, Cameron Dallas, that right, okay, yeah. mag con, all them ones. We went, <laughs> we went back to Soldier Boy's house and this birthday was on and it ended up the police came <laughs> the police nice. came and i just turned 21 so i was like 21 but my friend and my sister were there and they obviously weren't so they like hid in a wardrobe <laughs> from the police i just walked out and i was like yeah i'm 21 like they can't do nothing like it's a party yeah they can shut it down but but then i was like where's my sister do you know what i mean like i was completely sober anyway i was like where's my sister and uh the next thing, she just, about half an hour later, she just comes down her night and she was like, yeah, the police stopped me. And I was like, what did you say? And she was like, I just told them how old I was. She's like 14 at the time, 15. What, she said she was like, 15? Yeah, she told them the oh truth. Goodness. But like, at the end of the day, she wasn't doing nothing wrong. It wasn't even that late. So then that party got shut down and we ended up all going to Taylor Kniff's house from, yeah, and continued the party there. But that was the last I seen of Soldier Boy's house. Oh my goodness, I've just remembered too, in the Rolls Royce, the night that we were coming home, there there was like merchandise in the back, like caps. Right. And we were like, can we take these caps to the guy? And he was like, yeah, yeah, of course. So it's Again, I'll try and find photos of like my sister or whatever and my friend wearing them. It was these like caps and one was like pink and black. And then the next day when we were on Soldier Boy social media, it ended up being his merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> so we had this ongoing joke for ages. Like we were like Soldier Boy's number one fans because we had Obsessed. these hats. But yeah, LA's crazy. LA's crazy like different crazy. world crazy crazy like it sounds mad me saying about you know like my sister being so young and us going to these parties and stuff but it's so normal there there was people her age there that didn't even have like grown-ups looking after them like i was 20, 20 21 and yeah. i was her like guardian and i was making sure she was safe and everything but there's so there were so many like influencers at like 15 with no guardian they'd someone like pretending to be their guardian and they were just like running amok in la like drinking taking drugs everything i remember oh being God. horrified what they're doing now horrified they okay? oh and they're still on social media oh yeah. i'm not gonna name names <laughs> they're still out there um, you tell me after <laughs> yeah i'll tell you after 
but yeah it was really worrying I remember saying to my sister and stuff like we we you know we had to be there for work but like people had suggested us moving there and stuff I was like it's never happening this is just not a good place it's not good vibes really yeah yeah I've heard mixed things like some people love it some people hate it yeah it is it is it's pretty cool experience though when you're younger though isn't it yeah we've loads of good memories we've loads of good memories but it's just a crazy place and like we met some lovely friends so we had um Maggie Lindemann you know the things I'm not just a pretty girl dude, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. Dude. she is an absolute babe she like took us under her wing and like showed us about and like brought us to parties and brought us to events and then her friend Denzel he does like Instagram he is a king he looked after Denzel Shalina. who? Uh, Dion oh, I don't know. He's, he's on him and it's like he's like a little geo him and Ricky okay yeah and they oh they're so funny I'll show you them on Instagram later but um he's actually went more into fashion but anyway I'm really going off topic here but <laughs> they took us under their wing and they were so nice but then you had like a lot of people you met that were just like oh yeah like um what are you at today and you'd be like nothing they'd be like oh, okay bye they just want to see if they can get something out of you like if you're going to a party they want to come with right there that's what it's really really like over there i've but, heard that people are obsessed with like clouds and like who you're yeah. around with and they'll there. literally just say like do you want to meet up and like make it make it well it was youtube back in the day do you want to make up meet up make a youtube or a musically it was no it's tiktok obviously musically. but yeah there was very much so like that but as i say it was an experience it was an experience For sure you got a party in soldier boy's house yeah Fun Soulja times. Boy, I, <laughs> I think i've seen soldier boy before was he playing like a teenage disco i feel like he might have been playing like sense or something like that <laughs> Idea. You know, did you ever go to Sense? No. You never went to Sense in Cookstown? No. I thought you partied in Cookstown when you were younger, no? Yeah, but it would have been when like time was a thing more. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, Time Mondays. Mm. I used to go to them all the time. Not Time Mondays. I went in the weekend. I was up in Belfast during the week. Holy dance. Woo. Holy dance vibes. <laughs> we'll talk about that another time. Yeah. Holy dance. We actually ended up, oh, the Holy dance one of the first times we like properly met. ABA. Yeah. After ABA, yeah. And then I just fell asleep. That's right. Yeah. That was a late enough one. That was, a, that was, that was, night. that was, that was too late. That oh was God, ridiculous. Ho- oh my God. Yeah. And we had to go again the next day, didn't we? Or was that the last first night? Was that the first night or second night? That was the second oh, night. That, that was, was fine. Night. That was the second night. That was fine. Good times. Good, good times. times. Hectic weekend. Yeah. Are you going to go this year? <laughs> Probably. Probably. <aren't> I? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Let's face it. I do love a good, a good rave. ABA. Me too. But we're both kind of being sensible queens at the moment. So. Yeah. But for the special occasion, Crazy Shannon yeah. can come out and mm. ke- Crazy Kegs. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so that's, that's the, the crack with me and my story for the week. I love that. I think it's, it's, it's a random one, but yeah. No, kind of shows a different side to me, a little past life Shannon. <laughs> we have many past lives, both of us. I really do. You really do. You really, <laughs> really do. Even more so than me. Um, but yeah, will we move along? Let's go. <laughs> So this week we're doing What's the crack with? What's the crack with? This is where we pick a topic or we either have a guest and this week's topic we think it would be really interesting to talk about finding true self-love. Mm. And the thing is we've both went through our own journeys but I feel like they're very they're going to be very different Yeah. because I feel like yours is maybe a more holistic approach. Yeah. Do you, does that make sense? Yeah. This is what I was thinking about whenever I was like thinking what would be a good topic because I was like, I want something that we don't just agree. Like it's not that we're going to disagree, but we don't just have the same story. Yeah, we've something we can discuss, and I feel like this could be good because yours maybe a bit more holistic. Mine, mine's a bit more just like personal. Like, do you know what I mean? Like personal work. Mm. Um, but yeah, let's do it. I let's think get this, stuck I in. This will be a good. So, a what's good the crack with self love? <laughs> yeah, what's the crack with self love? <laughs> Uh, do you want to go first? Sure. I mean, I think I have been quite open on my social media about how practically my whole life, my whole life up until the past recent few years, I have really struggled with self-love. And I think one of the main things that I've realized throughout my whole journey is I've said a few times that I really had confident issue, confidence issues whenever I, I was always overweight, okay? And it's easy just to think that, oh, it was because I was overweight that I didn't have self-love. It's easy to think that. But upon reflection, what I've realized is I've, I said that, you know, as I lost weight and I, as I became more confident in myself, it kind of went hand in hand. But I don't think that me becoming more confident was actually coming down to me losing weight. 
I think it was taking care of myself more. Mm. So do you ever get whenever people say, um, like, it's easier to love some. It's like it's easier to love something if you've took pride in it and if you if you've looked after it and vice versa. If you love something, you will take pride in it and you'll look after it. So I kind of think of myself like that. So as I started treating my body better through food, through movement, through just doing more positive mm. activities, I started to love myself more. Mm. And I think it's because I was looking after myself that it became easy to love it. Mm. I hope this is making sense. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. I love yeah. that. So I do think obviously my weight loss definitely improved my confidence because it was something I struggled with so much. Yeah. But as I say, I do think a massive aspect comes from looking after myself more mm. that that self-love was able to flourish. Um, and then... Because you're nurturing your internal world as well as your external world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's it. That's it. And because I was doing more positive things and treating my body better, my thoughts were more positive. Everything just goes hand in hand yeah. everything goes hand in hand and that's what I realized and it's the same with like I tried to lose weight hundreds and hundreds of times and it never worked this time it worked and I can guarantee it's because of that it's because I was doing work on myself and not just trying to lose weight and stop eating as much mm -hmm. it was a process rather than just stop eating as much because you know like fitness people and influence fitness gym people they're so quick to say like oh it's just obvious like eat eat less, move more and you'll lose weight. For someone like me that struggled with disordered, eat, disordered eating and um, being overweight my whole life, it wasn't that easy. It's a process. But as I started to love myself more, it became easier to treat my body better. So it literally, it's like a full circle. It all goes hand in hand and spins like clockwork. Mm. And that's what I've talked about before. The second my mental health does go a little bit not as good like when I was in Australia, the clockwork kind of stopped spinning as well. Mm. So then I started finding myself going back into old habits and not being, my thoughts not being as positive, my eating not being as positive. It all goes together. Everything intertwines because what you think makes you how you feel and mm -hmm. how you feel is how you act and how you act is how you then think. So it's yeah. like a constant cycle. So if you're, if one thing starts going wrong, it's like, what's someone describe it as? It's like a spiral effect. Yeah. It's like a spiral effect. Because I've done the work in myself, I don't let it get out of control the way I maybe used to. I'm able to control it better. That if one thing isn't going right, like, yes, I mightn't, all the other things mightn't be spinning as well as usual, but I don't let it like continue and continue and continue and get worse because I've done that work. And I'm like, no, you're a bad bitch. You've got you're this. You're a bad bitch. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Love that. Um, That's a massive thing. I think my other thing that I always say was big for me was surrounding myself with first of all people that make me happy and cutting out people that were bringing me down and this did involve like I'm not gonna lie I did end friendships just because it's I was like needed, though. this negativity is bringing me down and I don't want it and there was a little phase then that I was a bit lonely and I was like what's gonna happen and that's what a lot of people obviously panic about I started just spending loads of time with my grandparents love and I'm not joking like my advice to anyone spend time with the people that mean most to you and I understand a lot of people don't have that family situation I'm very lucky to have a family that I can go that go to them for this but if you don't have that strong family support if it's your friends if whoever it is spend as much time as you possibly can with them people that fill up your cup and make you feel good because the longer the more time and the longer you spend with them the more the more fill you're going to feel and the more love you're going to feel surrounded by and then you're going to love yourself more honestly spending time with my grandparents I cannot it, it just made my day every day and made my mood so much better and the thing was then new friendships formed anyway yeah. do you know what I mean but because honestly, you're on a higher vibe and you'll attract your type of people as well do you know yeah what I mean? yeah 100 percent and who you surround yourself who you surround yourself with is so so important as well. Mm -hmm. So I love that you have the awareness of that. Yeah, Beautiful. you need to find the awareness though. You need to because for years I was just being friends with people because I was like, oh, they're good crack. Mm. And then when I look back and I maybe think for like conversations, like I had friends that would have like made me feel shit about myself, but I just passed it off because I was like, they're my friends. Like we speak to each other like that. It's crack. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like maybe like I like I I've actually a video on my phone of one of my friends like poking me in the belly and stuff. Mm. 
and I probably just laughed at the time and was like, ah, you know, because. Oh, what? Someone done that yeah, to you? Yeah, what, that, yeah, That's horrible. And I just like laughed at the time because I was like, we're friends, you know, we're really, really close. And then looking back, I'm like, that's, that probably affected me like subconsciously so much mm. more than I There's even know. There's a line you need to know not to cross. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm all for taking the piss. Like I'm winding people up in like mm-hmm. a jokey, fun way. Mm-hmm. But there's a line. Yeah, it's just too far. But yeah, so as soon as you start surrounding yourself with people that treat you well, then it's like, because they're treating you well, it's like, oh, I deserve this. I deserve to be treated well. So then you just treat yourself well. Mm. Do you get me? 100%. That's what I think. And it's a journey. It really is a journey. And it's going to be an ongoing journey for the rest of your life. Yeah. For everyone's lives. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Always... I never thought I would get to the stage that I'm like confident. This is a scary thing. Like, I've had friends say to me, like, it's so crazy that you're on social media because, like, you wouldn't even stand in a photo. Really? Oh, my goodness. Like, I, if I seen a phone come out, I would run and hide. Or if I had to get in a photo, I would hide behind everyone and just have, like, a bit of my face in it. Oh, my God. And then now I, like, come on camera. <laughs> don't give a shit. I don't give a shit what I look like. I, I don't give a you. shit what people think. But as I said, it's a process and you have to put in the work and sit down with yourself and just make yourself believe in yourself. 100%. I yeah. love that. I didn't actually know you back then. No. But even listening to you right now, I feel, like, really proud of you. I'm like, oh, oh my God, thanks. it's so beautiful listening to your thanks. journey. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I'm so glad I've got to where I finally am. And I feel like it, it's all, as you say, it's always a journey because you can only continue loving yourself more. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I still have absolutely awful days where I'm like, it's a roller I look coaster. in the mirror and I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, what's going on? Do you know what I mean? Mm. And then that's when you have to be like, no, push away them negative thoughts. You're class. Yeah. Even, even sometimes if you don't believe it, mm. still tell yourself it because then you'll eventually believe it. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Yeah. It's all about yeah. accessing yourself and embracing who you are right now in this moment. Yeah. As I said, I feel like that's mine. I think mine's very like personal, like mm. kind of thing. I feel like with you, like me looking at you as a person, you're obviously into like your meditation and stuff like yeah. that, and that's up all part of your journey. I'm guessing. So that's a part of my journey. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've been on a crazy journey. To be fair, um, I think I, mean, I touched on it in the last episode where. I was pretending to be someone else in my yeah. teenage years and that made me go into bad mental health. And then it got to a point in my early 20s, like I think what I mean, a 20 or something, where I hit rock bottom, where there was points where I, there was weeks on end where I physically could not leave my bed and there were points where I just didn't want to be here anymore. And then it got to a point where I was like, either I don't continue or I leave and go traveling, which is what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I did. And I went traveling and people always say like, traveling won't fix your problems and i fully agree with that but people do find themselves through it it, yes in a way but also changing your environment at at a time can massively help as well um so yeah i started traveling like i I just want to touch on people saying that traveling won't fix your problems in a way yes like if you're leaving problems at home behind to go traveling then problems are still going to be there when you get back Mm -hmm. and all that there but when it comes to like a journey of self-love it can make such a difference, as you say, taking yourself out of a an environment, a different a situation to work on yourself is yeah. different than like running away from your problems. I think it's two different things. Do you 100%, get me? Yeah. Um. So yeah, I started traveling and traveling. I don't. I don't even know if I would be here right now if I didn't go traveling. Do you know what I mean? Um. But yeah, traveling was the start of it, and then I remember the start, sort of the self help sort of things came in whenever I remember I was in Ibiza this was like a few years after I had started traveling and Mm -hmm. looking back I was enjoying myself but I still had like I still wasn't happy in myself does that make sense like there was times when I was like living in Magaluf or like on the cruise ship where I would literally cry myself to sleep like you're you're still enjoying yourself but change the scenery but you're still loads of stuff inside of you that needs fixed or whatever and I I think that's the thing too like a lot of people back to the whole like moving away to fix your problems a lot of people think you just move away and that's your problems fixed no you then move away and have to do the work which mm. is obviously what you've done yeah but from this then i started meeting like different people people who are authentically themselves people who have very open minds and you start learning about the world actually isn't this week closed mindset that people may have and that you have you may have yourself from like living in a small town and stuff and don't get me wrong, not everyone has this like close, small minded, but I feel like I, I certainly did maybe. And that maybe put me in a negative headspace. But I remember this moment in Ibiza and it was so beautiful. I was dancing on a rooftop with all of my friends and the sun was rising. And I just remember 
feeling this overwhelming feeling of love mm -hmm. and joy and gratitude. And it was the first time in my life I felt those amazing feelings. And I was hysterically crying. And I was like, oh my God, this is like the best moment of my life. Like with emotions. Yeah, it was the most, one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. And I was like, what the hell is going on? This is crazy. It's nothing like I've ever felt before. And then I think that was the first moment in my life where I actually felt like properly alive, if that makes sense. It might mm -hmm. sound very woo-woo. And a lot of my experiences with self-love is kind of woo-woo, so I have no mind with it all. But everyone's experience is personal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? 100%. So like no one can judge you for saying something that they might go, oh, that's a bit crazy because it's, it's not their experience, it's yours. 100%, Do you know what I mean? yeah. So yeah, then I had this moment where I think was my spiritual awakening. And See, that's the thing. You'd be very spiritual. I'd be very spiritual. Yeah. And before that, I was like, my family group brought me up as like a Catholic, mm -hmm. but growing up as a gay teenager in like a Catholic place, <laughs> I just had in my head, it's all bullshit. I didn't believe any of it. I literally hated it. Didn't want to be associated with it. And then after, after that, spur, like I was fully interested in believing anything. After that, then I see, you know, you see like quotes on Instagram or like people talking about like mental health stuff or like self-help stuff on like Instagram and stuff, before I would have seen it and just scrolled past, not really acknowledged did, it. Yeah, you didn't take it in. Didn't take it in. But after that moment, I just started, I started like focusing on it. And I was like, oh my God, this is... Connecting started, like, more with yeah, it. Yeah, 100%. I started like downloading it into me and like think, like learning from it. And then I started learning more and more. And then it was after, during COVID, I was living in Miami. Mm -hmm. And we obviously had to go home for the first lockdown. And during the first lockdown, I was working as the butchers. And I was literally in the back of Asda Butchers <laughs> chopping the meat up every day, but I was by myself. I so can't all imagine it. <laughs> we butchers in a park chopping this. up meat. <laughs> I want a picture. <laughs> I'll show you later. Um, See, so yeah, I was working at Asda Butchers and I was definitely breaking the rules, but I was in the back by myself and I had one AirPod in and I started listening to like self help podcasts. Asda, if you're watching this, he apologizes. <laughs> I used to get in trouble all the time and I was like, I know I'm going to be from the summer. I'm here for a few months. I do not care. <laughs> so I was listening to self help podcasts and I actually started buzzing off listening and learning about it. And then I was like, started learning about myself from listening to really intelligent people talking about like spirituality and self-help and personal growth and all that there. And I just learned so much. And then at the end, when I was leaving to go to Ibiza, I felt like I had grown so much as a person just from listening to podcasts and audiobooks. So I listened to like Good Vibes, Good Life. It's a really good book to read or listen to when you're first starting on your self-help journey. And You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero, also another incredible one. And I just felt like so much more like, mm, I know what I kind of want to do. Well, I think like so this one saying like I've never read a book yeah. or like self help podcast or something. This is where, but I feel like it's kind of similar in what we're saying. It's like you're listening to books to get that that feeling of like what's the word? Like you're being told something so you believe it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you're getting that from books and podcasts. Where remember I was saying earlier about how I would just like tell myself like no, like you're a bad bitch, even if I felt like shit. Yeah. It's the same thing and it works probably the same way in your brain. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. listening to it through a podcast or a, reading it in a book and I'm d telling myself it. Affirmations. Affirmations, yeah. yeah. So it's the same It's the same thing but like in different formats. 100%, Does that make sense? Yeah. But yeah, so then I remember I left the as the butchers and I remember saying to the guy I worked with, no, this was actually the year later, or was it? I can't remember. But I remember leaving as the butchers and I was like, I'm going to start social media. I'm going to make my job. I'm going to travel the world. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it because it the, the audiobooks were like, help me realize that this is the direction I want to go in. Yeah. I started listening yeah. to myself more. So yeah, then obviously for a few years, I just sort of traveled all around the world and I started dabbling in all of the different spiritual and self-help practices that are out there. So I started meditating. I started things called like breath work and I started working with plant medicines, which we can talk about another time. It's, I can talk about that for ages. And yeah, I just started dabbling in loads of different like self-help things. And as time progressed and as the more different things I worked on, don't get me wrong, it was a challenging journey because I feel like a lot of self-help people on like social media is like toxic positivity. And it's like, oh, just like be happy. <laughs> just... That's something, yeah, I have noticed so, like toxic positivity. I never really understood what that meant. I used to see people talk about it. Mm. And then now I'm like very aware of it because... Yeah. That's what a lot of people are promoting. 100%. This toxic positivity that's like not realistic. Not at all. Because yeah. your journey to loving yourself can be dark as well. Because with my journey, I had sat with myself in like plant medicine ceremonies and like breathwork ceremonies. And I have went to the darkest, most traumatic moments of my life, which I'll obviously not get into right now. Mm -hmm. But I went to like really, really horrible places where I felt shame, where I felt fear where I felt anxious or I felt like the worst emotions because 
I've been through some stuff to be mm-hmm. fair and I've had to sit with that that bit, those memories and I've had to sit with myself and in those moments it's about forgiving yourself or forgiving other people and showing compassion to the younger version of yourself and just for there was moments where I felt like I was giving myself a hug yeah. and that's that's helping you heal those parts of yeah, yourself yeah, so yeah. the self-love journey isn't all sunshine and rainbows it's going to the darkest moments of your life because to... that's how you fix things that's uh-huh. what I say this all the time like whenever I'm talking with friends or talking to my boyfriend about people you know like properly fixing themselves it goes back to the whole thing like moving country just running away from your problems or like covering them up by distractions and stuff yeah and then people may appear to be better mm. or fixed but they're not they've covered up you have to fix things you have to go deep yeah and sometimes maybe even make yourself feel a bit worse before you feel better 100 percent. it's not all sunshine and roses it really isn't it's a roller coaster journey to be fair and yes it's going to be uncomfortable but it's so worth it's it worth when you it. come out the other side yeah. because in more recent years there has been moments where the see that moment where I felt like pure love in Ibiza. Mm-hmm. I have felt that when I'm riding a motorbike through the jungle in Thailand. There's moments where I felt it walking around the lock at home, like just pure gratitude. And now I like I could talk about my self help journey for a long time, but we'll not mm-hmm. go into all the, the big details. But I've tried loads of different practices and self help and self love to me now is an ongoing journey. It'll be an ongoing journey for the rest of my life. But like you said, it's doing things for yourself to make you feel good. So. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, there's days I feel like shit. There's days I'm going to sit on my phone and scroll on Netflix and scroll on my phone and eat shit and not exercise and not do the things that are good for me. I just want to interrupt you here, yeah. okay? Please no one take offence to this. And it's kind of, it's not that it's aimed at you. It's I have a lot of friends that live by this. <laughs> like a lot of friends. You do, but it's not just you. And I've thought this for a while, but I wanted to save saying it and like discussing it for the podcast because I do think it could be an interesting topic of conversation yeah so you're saying there about you know scrolling on your phone I have a lot of friends that live by this thing and it must be a lot of self-help books and stuff tell you not to do this that when you wake up in the morning don't just go on your phone straight away and I do get the reasoning behind it I think it is a good idea but I have so many friends you included that then if they do go on their phone they make a note of it in their head and they're like, oh, my day is off to a bad start because I went my phone too early. 100%. Every time I go on my phone to the board, I'm like, oh my God, this is the worst day. Yeah, so then... And it's... you can change it, to be fair. Like, if you... I, I do interrupt the day and then maybe have a good day, but a lot yeah. of the time, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, this is a shit day because I went on my phone. Yeah, so it, it, it's nearly a bit of toxic positivity because mm-hmm. it's like you have a placebo effect in your head then that if you go on your phone first thing in the morning, like, your day's off to a bad start. We're like, I don't live by that. Like, I go on my phone when I want to go on yeah. my phone. So then, like... So you might have good control. If I wake up in the morning and go on my phone, I'm never, ever going to think, oh, my day's off to a bad day. Yeah. And I think it's a bad thought to have, nearly, that, like, you know, oh, I've went on my phone this morning, that's it, my day's off to a bad day. That could that's be already true, to be fair. A, it's put a dampener on your day, then. It could be true, but the way I look at it is, I'm doing a lot of work on myself at the minute to perfect my routine and to see what wor- yeah. works for me and see what's not bad for me. And I just notice... I'm I'm doing a lot of like in, like listening to podcasts and stuff about dopamine levels, mm-hmm. and I listen to a lot of neuroscientists, and they're showing scientific facts, as in like, um, whatever way your brain is in the morning, if you go on your phone, it makes you get dopamine spikes yeah, and crashes, you're getting so then you're quick. addicted to the dopamine yeah. all day. So if you like wait like a bit in the morning, to your brain is actually like fully awake and functioning, yeah. and then if you go on your phone, it doesn't affect the dopamine there levels. Definitely and stuff. It is, does a wee bit, but there, there definitely is like good reasoning for not going on your phone in yeah. the morning. I totally get it. But I think there's like a lot of pressure on it. Like the amount of people <laughs> I see be like, eat vlogs, everything's like, oh, like day started off bad because I woke up and I ended up scrolling my phone. And then like, that's just my day day off to a bad day. And I'm like, but it's not, you can have the best day of your life. To be just fair. Just forget about the fact you went on your phone. I think it's days where I'm like wanting to be productive and like work in my routine and stuff. I think mm-hmm. it definitely affects me then. But if it's a day I'm going to like a festival, I'm going to go on my phone first thing in the morning yeah. or a day I'm doing something fun. Like it, does, it won't affect those days. Yeah. But it's days where I'm like, I want to be like motivated and it affects my motivation. That's where I think. Yeah. I, like getting dopamine spikes first thing in the morning affects my motivation for the whole day. Whereas if I don't go on my phone, if I go to like the gym or like a cold water dip straight away as soon as I wake up, you that gives you like natural dopamine. So then you're motivated the whole day. So it's all about my motivation levels and things yeah. like that with the phone. It definitely does make sense. But that's why I'm just like, remember like, 
oh, after a bad day, I'm like, fuck it. Like, you went <laughs> on your up. phone. Not the end of the world. <laughs> Shut We're up, We're going to have a class day. Come on. Right, next time I posted my story, I'm having a bad day because I go on my phone. You're going to ring me and be like, cakes. Shut the fuck up. You literally just went on your phone. It's not the end of the world. You could have, you could literally win the lottery today. It could be the best day of your life. Your I phone is not, you know what I mean? But no, I go on my phone first thing every morning. But like, I... I'm not a scroller. See, I'm in a, I'm in a, I have a phone addiction and if I go on it, I am sucked into that device. I'm sucked into social media and I'm like, I, 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 I have discipline problems when it comes to my phone. Really? So I, I physically have to leave. I leave my phone in my mum's office so, so that, that as soon as I wake up, I don't go near it. Like yeah. I, have, I have an addiction to my phone. Hands up, I do. I go on my phone first thing. I'll, I'll check my emails, my messages. But I kind of, I'm not a big scroller. I'll go on and look at my comments on my social media and stuff yeah. and like interact with my following. But, don't get me wrong, sometimes I'll sit and scroll through TikTok or whatever, but it's only if I've nothing mm. better to do. I notice, I notice it when I'm feeling shit. Mm-hmm. So say the, the past week I've not been feeling the best mm-hmm. and I've been on a low vibe. And if you're into if you're into like astrology and stuff, it's something to do with the moon and the planets and stuff like that. If you're not... Oh, is it a... What do you call that? It's like a, an eclipse and like retrograde uh, and things like that. What do you... Mercury, Mercury retrograde re- reg- is coming up. I couldn't say regagate. Regagate. Is that like renegade, the TikTok <laughs> dance? <laughs> Merc- <laughs> Mercury renegade. <laughs> but yeah, I've been doing astrology. I like that stuff. And I've been feeling like I've been feeling the feels. And because I've been feeling the feels, I've been scrolling on my phone. I've been binging on like notifications. I've I can totally see. Binging I chocolate. totally disagree with like just sitting scrolling on phones for ages, like mm. screen time. I get how that's bad for your mental health. Yeah. 100%. That whole thing of like comparing yourself to people and seeing other people's lives and uh-huh. too much, and you're not like focusing on your own. Totally yeah. get that. Um, so that's why I can't go on my phone in the morning because I can get sucked in very easily. Whereas you have discipline to not do that. Yeah, I can get sucked in if I go on it. Do you know what I mean? I this might sound selfish. I think I'm like, <laughs> I'm very. I don't really give a shit about what other people's do. <laughs> like I like seeing people do well, and I like seeing like nice things and positive things and all. Yeah, but like. I don't really give a shit. Don't give I'm a shit. I'm just like, as long as That's I'm good. loving life and the people I love's loving life, 100%. I don't really care. <laughs> um, so yeah, the yeah. self-help journey, I, some days, yes, you're going to feel shit, but like days, self-help to me now. Another tangent. We're very we sorry. Are, that was my love fault. We tangent. <laughs> we tangent. <laughs> tangent. <laughs> so self-help to me is basically feeling gratitude, not really caring what other people think, trying to live as your authentic self, doing things that you know you want to do for yourself. So if you want to sing, sing. If you want to dance, dance. If you want to do something fun, just do whatever you want to do for you and what feels good for yourself. Because if you try loads of new things, you'll soon realize what makes you feel good and what you like to do. And you'll mm-hmm. soon realize which people make you feel good and which people you want to be around. Yeah. And it's there's self-help could be, or self-love could be a million and one different things. But it's going going to see your grandparents or going for a walk around nature it and feeling gratitude to how well. beautiful it's the tiniest things like mm-hmm. see like being at home right now where life isn't uh, maybe as exciting as it was whenever i was traveling i'm appreciating the little moments you're probably like, doing a lot of healing as well in that in mm-hmm. that like when when life's peaceful i find that's a good time to like heal yeah and it's always going to be a journey like some days i definitely can't say i feel love for myself to be fair but i've definitely got a lot of love for myself a lot of the time I love the person I think, that I am. I don't think any human on this planet can say that they totally love themselves 24-7. No. I think it's only human nature to like have doubts about yourself and maybe 100%. not be a fan of yourself sometimes. But yeah, I think it's completely normal. And it's a work I mean? in progress. And mm-hmm. to be fair, the journey that I have been on, I am so grateful. Like you said for yourself, I'm so grateful to where I am now. Like it, uh, me... What, what age was I then? Six, seven years ago compared to me now. Like a different person. Completely different. And I feel like the 19-year-old the would look up to me, which I feel very yeah, proud of. Yeah, that that's makes sense. such a lovely like, thing. Like, I feel like he would be like, I would want to be like him. And I feel like I'm very proud of myself like, in that go sense. You. Yeah. yeah, that's so cute. Um, so, yeah, I'm very grateful for the journey that I've been on. I always thank, I'm big into the universe and stuff. I always show gratitude to the universe. I'm like, thank you so much for bringing me on this journey. It's been intense. It's been dark at times, but a lot of life is so beautiful you're very so you're very universe like mm. in the universe i don't know i don't know i i have days where i'm like maybe i do because i'm very much so everything happens for a reason i always tell my mm. one of my favorite quotes it's so random i think i heard this when i was younger and it was like that is the biggest load of shit and now i live by it and i don't even know who quoted it i don't know <laughs> where it's from but i just love the mean so it's basically if it's not okay it's not the end yeah okay that is so true because 
the amount of situations I've been in and I've been like, oh my goodness, I'm never going to get over this stage in my life. Like the, n- nothing's ever going to be fixed. There's 100%. no way I can get through this. And then like I'm over and everything's okay. It just wasn't the end yet. It wasn't for you. It's so true. So then part of me is like, is that the universe? Part of me is like, do you know what I mean? I'm still not 100%. Yeah. Well, it can be whatever you wanted yeah, to believe in. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? It, it's, yeah. it's just the journey that I've been on. This is, this, is what I, this is what I like to call it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like everyone is different. But like you said, like, I do like the idea of it though. Yeah. But like you said. Can the universe get me a prize guy win please? (laughs) (laughs) See, we're going to answer all the time. (laughs) My friend won 28 grand on that the other day. I'm like, please, can I win, sir? (laughs) I'm going to need to honestly stop giving him my money because I feel like like I want to get a mortgage in the next two years and they're just going to look and be like, you have a gambling addiction with the prize guy. (laughs) (laughs) Prize guy might pay for your mortgage. I need to chill. I need to chill. That was a nice wee chat. I like that. I'm proud of both of us. Air five. Air five. I feel all warm and fuzzy. I know. I love it. And if you're watching this and you're feeling a bit down about yourself or things may not be going right in your life right now, trust that it's happening for a reason and you're being redirected and redirected in the right path that you're meant to go to because I was doing uni, like you said, and I was sacked from a uni, sacked from my job, and I thought it was the worst thing ever. Thought it was like my life was over, and it turned out to be probably the be- one of the best things that's ever happened to me because it put me in the right path. And life may feel shit at times, but life is also going to be beautiful many other times. So. so true. Yeah. If it's not okay, it's not the end. I think that's what it is, but that's the long and short. Sounds right, yeah. Yeah. If, it's, if everything isn't okay, it's not over yet. But yeah, that's So nice. let's move on to the final topic. Tell us your crack, or what's the crack with you, or what's it called? Tell us your crack, Which, is it? Tell us your crack, it's one of those. I've got it on my phone. We'll go, <laughs> it's we'll... something along the lines of that, okay? <laughs> so, thank you so much to everyone who sent us your dilemmas. I'm Shannon intrigued, hasn't I haven't seen, seen these week. yet, yeah. So, yeah, if you want to send us your dilemmas next week, it's crackheadspod at outlook.com. Send us any advice or any funny stories or anything, anything you want us anything. to talk about. First dilemma is... And it's completely anonymous, by the way. We will never mention names or anything, so don't worry about that. The first dilemma is on my phone that is recording the podcast. Oh, no. (laughs) BRB. (laughs) BRB. Sorry about that, guys. We're back. We've got the dilemmas. So, first dilemma is best advice to lose weight. I've struggled all my life to lose weight, and now I've hit a brick wall. Can't find the motivation. I'm unhappy with the way I look. I'm going to leave that one to you because I haven't really got experience in that. Okay. Oh, this could be an episode in itself, but I'll try and keep it short and sweet just for the sake of this. I could give you so much more advice, but we'll keep it short and sweet. So kind of it goes hand in hand with what I was saying earlier in this episode. When it comes to weight loss, you need to, I found I needed to do work on myself, first of all. So the, the one time a weight loss journey worked for me is whenever I sat down with myself beforehand, I educated myself on calories and stuff like that. But I also sat with myself and was like, self-love. I worked, I worked in myself and it makes it so much easier to continue a weight loss journey whenever you have love for yourself because you want to do what's best for yourself. It makes it so much easier to stick to it. Um, so yeah, I would say work on, work on your self-love first of all, because I know personally that how I'm eating goes hand in hand with my mental health and how I feel about myself, like I kind of said earlier. Um, secondly to that, a bit of advice I really like is sometimes it's hard to find motivation to continue. Like this girl guy said, they feel like they've hit a brick wall. So common in weight loss to lose motivation. So it's easy to say find motivation because you want to do it for yourself. I like finding motivation in someone else. So what I did, I was like, I, whenever I started my weight loss journey, I was like, what, 24, 25? I want to have kids, right? This was my thought. I was like, I want to have kids someday. And if I continue eating the way I am and putting on weight the way I am, okay, yes, I might have kids someday, but it's going to affect my quality of life, like the time I spend with them because I'm going to be overweight I was so unfit. I wouldn't be able to play with them the way I would want to. Do you know what I mean? Like Mm. take them to amusement parks and take them to like soft play places and whatever else. I was so unfit that I wouldn't have been able to do that or go to the park and play with the ball with them. So I found motivation in that. I was like, I want to someday have children and be the best version of myself I can be for them. And that means that 
whenever maybe you've lost a bit of motivation for yourself wanting to lose weight, you fall back in that. Another example, if you do have children, you be, that's, I want to... That's one of the reasons I started the gym recently, started to interrupt. Like, I was thinking that myself and I heard loads of people speaking about it recently. It's like, think of yourself and your granddad. You want to be able to lift like your grandkids and stuff. And if exactly. you're not exercising now and keeping your body healthy, like yeah. you, that your body is your temple, do you know what I mean? So that, that I find a motivation from other people, other places. If you do already have kids, look at your children and be like, okay, I want to lose weight for myself, but I'm not really feeling motivated today, but you're going to be my motivation. I want to be here for as long as possible for you. Mm. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to stick to it. I also think my, I'll give you one more bit of advice. Don't make any drastic changes. There are so many, you know, diets out there and whatever else, but like I used calorie counting, but whenever I say my calorie deficit was so small and I just gradually decreased it, it was then easier to stick to it because it wasn't like I was feeling extreme hunger from lack of food. Yeah. I was just gradually doing it bit by bit, cutting out things each week. Slow and steady wins the race. If you jump in at something and do these crazy crash bad diets <laughs> or whatever, it's not going to work. It's not sustainable. It's it's never going to work. Because I've seen Keelan Conway speak about something with Dr. Reshi's class. I love her content. Oh, love her. Big love her. Yeah. Um, and she was talking about it was the keto diet or something. And the girl was like, I'm going to try this keto. She was pretty, she was acting, but she was mm-hmm. herself in both things. But she was like, I'm going to start this keto diet. My friend was telling me about it and she lost loads mm-hmm. of weight. And then the other girl, which is still her, but she pretended it was another girl. And um, she was like, um, yeah, but does she still have the weight off? And she was like, no, she doesn't. <laughs> yeah. So if you go into something as like a crash diet, like it's not sustainable. You'll just go back to old habits very, very quickly. You'll get sick of it. You'll lose that motivation. Slow and steady wins the race. A hundred percent. And give yourself some compassion, I think, as well. I think that's a big thing, even with myself sometimes. I, it's like, I try also, and be compassion to myself. Yeah, in s- s- compassion. And like, I speak about this all the time, about how so many PT and fitness influencers to promote their own like services you know if they're like an online coach or whatever they're like it's always the right time to start a weight loss journey you have to start now (laughs) blah 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 all this here and it's meant to be like motivational I disagree sometimes it's just not the right time to start a weight loss journey and I know that from experience for example so if you're going through really hard times in your life you're not going to be able to focus on a weight loss journey Mm. I find with the time that it worked for me, as I said, it's whenever I'd done a lot of work, it was self-love. I was able to make it a priority in my life at that time. I didn't have anything else major. Obviously, I had little stresses and worries, but there wasn't anything major going on in my life. So it was the right time. So sometimes it's just not the right time. And if it's not, so be it. We'll try again next month. Give yourself a bit of compassion, as you say, and chill. Just do you know what I mean? Go with the flow. I really like that advice. Yeah. Take some I say you know up. what I mean so much. I noticed, by no, the way. So do I. Every time I record a video on, t- or on TikTok or Instagram, you know I mean? think at the end of the sentence, like, do you know what I mean? Is it like, like... <laughs> because we say it so fast as well, people not from you know here what what will be like, what was that nonsense like gobbledygook <laughs> yeah. at the end of the sentence? What yeah. are they saying? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love it. Right, should we move on to the next dilemma? Yeah. Thank you so much for sending in yours. We really yeah, and best it. luck in your journey. And sending you so much love. We yeah. got you. Hi, after listening to Kegs talk about his sexuality and feeling like he had to kind of hide it, made me realize that you are the right people to ask. I'm 25. I've always dated, been in relationships with males. I'm attracted to males, but I find my relationships only last about a year as I become unattracted. And I guess the newness of the relationship wears off. I've been to gay clubs in Belfast and actually find I turn to check out an attractive girl more than I'd look twice at a man when out or even through social media. I'm wondering, does this mean I'm potentially lesbian or bisexual? I'm afraid to actively start dating a girl in case I'm totally wasting her time and it would be, I would put girls off that I'm so unsure. I've tried speaking to my sister and mum about this and they just kind of laugh it off and say that I can Mm. say that I can find girls attractive, but it doesn't mean I'm not straight sort of thing. Just wanting to somewhat, just wanting a somewhat opinion on this as I'm from a small town and being gay isn't a thing that's spoken often about. I don't really have people to turn to or people with experience in this to give me advice. Maybe I'm straight and just overthinking this. Thank you so much. And I love the podcast so far. Oh, I really makes me really sad that like her mom and her sister just laughed. Yeah. Oh, that makes me so sad. But it's so normal as well. I think with girls as well, if the girls say that, like it's different when it's if we were a boy saying that, like you're not going to get like a, a guy saying straight off, would mind like getting with girls or whatever. Um, maybe that's why they might have laughed because the they reaction, might have taken it serious yeah. and especially from being a small town as well yeah um yeah. like i'm from a small town myself i'm from like one of the you smallest towns you can get, you get it. and 
I was the same. I had no one really to turn to until I started getting with a guy who was actually from my small town who was older and he was sort of my mentor. So yeah, it was kind of yeah. nice to go to him all the time Brought and ask for his advice. Kind of thing, made you comfortable. Yeah, 100%. Because I remember the first time I was like getting with him and I was like, I'm never going to come out. It's never going to happen. I'm always putting me in the closet. You thought you would never have the confidence. Never. Yeah, that's so but, crazy. So in terms of what you're asking, asking am I bisexual, asking am I a lesbian, asking am I straight, I think don't put pressure on yourself to put a label on it. Don't, labels you don't need to label yourself right now because you don't know who you are you don't know what you want One, that's exactly what I was thinking who needs the label you don't need a label enjoy yourself mm. experiment 100% experiment that you'll figure you'll figure it out but you don't need to label it and I would say definitely experiment and if you are experimenting just be, be honest, honest. Exactly. always just be that's honest that's the key like no one no one's going to get offended by that if you mm-hmm. like I have friends that are lesbian gay and I know from their perspective like if a girl my lesbian friends of a girl came up to them and was like look I'm not taking the piss because that is a thing girls do yeah but if you were honest and not taking the piss I'm genuinely interested in experimenting and you know experimenting with my sexuality 100% I don't think many people's going to have an issue with that and you know what as well I think a lot of people are on a spectrum like there's yeah. I don't I, there might be 100% straight people out there I can't say because I'm not 100% yeah. straight <laughs> But uh, yeah, there's a spectrum, off. definitely. Um, to be fair, I definitely find girls attractive myself. Mm-hmm. Like I, I find them like beautiful. Like I can say you're a beautiful yeah. girl, but I would never go with a girl now. Like yeah, yeah, I did yeah, when yeah. I was younger. To you be can, fair, because you... I was ex- I was experimenting <laughs> yeah, with girls yeah. to see if I liked That's it. That's it. So we just have to experiment. See but what you, you like. can appre- you can appreciate beauty and attractiveness. A hundred percent. There's definitely a spectrum there, and that's why do not do this girl here put any pressure on yourself to figure out exactly what you are because you might just be a little bit of a mixture of everything. You and you curious. may you may even at some stages of your life be more lesbian than other stages of your life. You may find that certain stages of your life you're more straight. Yeah. It can just be a journey. It's Do you know a journey. what I mean? Uh, enjoy the journey. Enjoy the process. Enjoy experimenting. Yeah. Enjoy meeting new people and putting yourself mm-hmm. out there. And yes, it's going to be scary at first. You're going to be terrified at first to be fair but it's those things that scare you is what you should lean into Mm -hmm. i found myself it's those things that scare you is what's going to give you confidence it's what's going to help you find out who you are as well so don't go hard on yourself don't put pressure on yourself to go have a label go out and have fun Mm -hmm. and if it gets to a point where you actually do meet a girl and your mom and sister are laughing just be like here this is me do you know what I mean? Like, be honest with yeah. them. And at least you had the balls to even yeah, say to them at that point. Yeah, fair play to you. Fair play. The fact that you were able to say to your mum and sister, okay, you didn't get a great response, but, like, you you had the courage to, to try and open yeah. that conversation up. So, like, you're going to be just fine. 100%. You're going to be just fine. And to be fair, they might not have even thought you were serious. If they, if, if they know mm-hmm. you're being serious, there'll be a different reaction. And to be fair, reactions from parents from a small town and family from members from a small town aren't always the best. I know that for myself, to be yeah. fair. Um. So, but oh, over time, everything will be sweet. That yeah. it usually always is. You're going to figure um, it out. So yeah, we got you. And I'm maybe, excited for your journey, I'm to be excited. honest. I'm hoping to bump into you in a gay club some night and you'll and tell you me all the crack about all your yeah. lesbian experiences. Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> actually do. Actually send us an email whenever you... Keep us if, updated if, if, on, if, your, if on your journey. something does happen. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. We love you. We thank you. And thank you so much. Oh, for I love time. the dilemma part. So I, I love this. I feel like it's such a nice like connection or something. Yeah. Like we're really getting to know our people who's like the listening or watching. 100%. Do you know what I mean? I really like it. So thank you so much for sending in your dilemmas, everyone. We loved really it. loved them. We have a few more that we didn't get time to answer, but we can answer maybe next week or mm-hmm. send more in next week and we'll yeah. try and get them answered. See, so yeah, thank you so much. We love you. We got you always. These are our crackheads. Yeah, our little crackheads. <laughs> our little crackheads. <laughs> I love that. So that is the end of episode two, everyone. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. We really appreciate it. That was so fun. I love that we episode. Yeah, it's all it so good fun. to talk about this. Very Lauren wholesome, fun. apart from you shitting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I told that in the podcast. I haven't even told anyone that yet. So you are an inside scoop of that one. That was tea. I, haven't even, I didn't even tell my close friends. Like on my close friend story. My close friend story is usually filled with that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, I didn't know This that is like one. my new close friend story. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us this week. We really appreciate it. And if you want to do us a massive favor and either hit follow or subscribe, depending on what platform you're watching it on, it not only helps us grow as a podcast and helps us maybe get like good guests or whatever also means that you will not miss out on an episode that is the end of the episode thank you so much for joining us next week we love you bye bye